guys, this is definitely this welcome. This is a pattern review and a bit of a hand sewing update. Well, I hope you're all well. Um, I've been a bit slow with my videos. It's um, summer holidays here in the UK and so things are a bit more busy for me than they normally are. Um, but I wanted to tell you a bit about this beauty on my right. So this is Calm Apparel summer vibes dress i nearly forgot then sorry the summer vibes dress i have a thing to show you so this is the front page of the pattern which looks very glamorous doesn't it i don't quite look like that in mine um and that's the line drawing which might be more help so you can see it has these panels on the front big gathered sleeves into a um, elasticated cuff and it's essentially almost maxi length so mid axis but maxi length um, and like an, a mandarin collar and a little tie at the front and this is the first paid pattern of this um, pattern company uh, the design is called Imbi and there was a free top called the Imbi top and um, that a few people made is so frugal challenge um, a few people made that so you can have a look and I think that's still available as a free pattern if you wanted to see that. Um, so this came about because I was going to Peru at short notice. I had no time really between funerals and all sorts of other things to um, prep more fabric and prep another pattern. So I twirled this and I knew it was going to fit me um, and so I had these pieces cut out and decided to take it with me and have a go at hand sewing it while I was away. I thought to start with I'll tell you a bit about how that went and then I'll come up with some guidelines for doing a hand sewing project interrupted by a small dog obviously well a small a young large dog is probably more accurate Um, I will pop a picture of him in if I've got a current one. Dress that you can throw on to walk to the beach and then throw back on and go get dinner or dress up for a summer night out as well as being able to layer it to wear in cooler months. Semi-fitted dress with voluminous sleeves and open front with ties and a small collar. A gathered skirt with pockets, this dress combines all the elements that I love in a dress. Inspired by warm days when a dress can take you from beach to dinner and beyond. And essentially it's showing as going from a UK size 6 to a UK size 24, so that's her small to her extra extra large. However, um, a gun, although it's fitted over the bodice, the sleeves insert into the princess line and the skirt is full. So actually, I think um, if you were at the top end of the sizing on that, it would be fine. So I didn't have any issues with this um, in terms of cutting out. I interfaced the bits I needed to interface before I went away um, because obviously I wasn't going to have access to an iron. And actually, I didn't get as much done as I'd hoped for. I think I got as far as I'd done the bodice and I'd gathered the sleeves and I think that's all I'd done. So when I came back there was that kind of added thing of shall I just use the sewing machine to finish this up because it would be much quicker. I sewed it all by hand. Um, some of it's finished with pinking shears so although I French seamed some of it I hadn't quite thought through all of the finishing and so I had put the pockets on and understitched them by hand when I realised that that wasn't going to work if I was going to French seam the side seams. So um, they're not seams that are under particular tension and actually what I've done, I'll show you the inside in a minute, but I French seamed all of the kind of the bodice work and all the understitching was done by hand. So the side seams have just got a single layer of stitching and then they are done with pinking shears. And then I ran a line of stitches and then I realised that I needed to sew those from the other direction so you could see the less attractive under layer of my stitches on the outside so I turn those under again and actually that probably makes the sleeves about where I want them to be. Um, you could of course alter those to be any length and again with the dress I think Imbi shows one on her Instagram account of a kind of short one um, and that's kind of tempting to do, I might do a short one as well uh, but I don't know how much place I've got for very patterned dresses in my wood and my aesthetic seems currently to be leaning towards something a bit more streamlined. I'm saying that and I'm looking across on the table and there's like a gingham and a floral <laughs> but but no essentially I am you know leaning towards a more modern aesthetic I think. The only issue that I found putting it together was 
um, this seam here and that's probably because I was doing it by hand so I was trying to make sure that that was reasonably robust so I've reinforced that with um, a few extra stitches. The fabric that I used is from an eBay seller, I'll link it down below. I spent a long time going through a lot of Indian block print to find exactly the colours that I had in my head. Um, and quite a long time cutting out to make sure that I had the distribution and the balance of the pattern um, in a way that I was happy. So I have my little label that's inside. It obviously all got pressed when I came back. Um, there is the tie at the front. You can see that I hadn't really, the only bit that's kind of untidy is that bottom bit of the bib. Um, and what I ended up doing was whip stitching it once I'd kind of double stitched it, I whip stitched it to try and make sure that it came down. You can see it's starting to become untidy already. So that's the only seam that's like that. So what I might do is to bias bound that at some point, but I'll see how we get on. You can see the rest of it, I managed to French seam nicely and because of the way the bodice is constructed you can probably see that so that's the inside of the bodice so you've just turned and then stitched it down. So um, I've worn this a few times since it seems to be wearing okay I shall report back when I know how long it's actually going to last me um, but I mean I suppose I could always repair it on the sewing machine if I'm finding that my hand stitching isn't up to scratch but um, I quite often finish my garments by hand and those pieces seem to last so I just I just hope all of these do. The ones that I'm more anxious about is a side seam that's then been pinked. So a thumbs up from me this does what it says on the tin. I was very happy with the finished dress and I will hopefully while I've been talking have been putting some finished garment pictures and a bit of a twirl. Uh, we haven't really had the summer weather to enjoy floating about in this but actually um, it's kept me quite warm in the cooler the cooler July that we seem to be experiencing in the UK at the moment. So on to the sewing by hand part of the video so I thought what it might be useful to do is to kind of sum up my the things that I took with me and the kind of principles that I followed. So I took with me a little project bag so this might be the wee bra bag I'm not sure I think it is um, this was one that I was the first one I made at Christmas for when I was doing Christmas presents and so I wasn't quite happy with the pattern placement. You can see I cut the bunny's head off so I couldn't give that to anybody so I ended up keeping that one. So I took inside there needles in a needle case, a leather thimble, I took needles, again many needles, I took beeswax, you can obviously get this in all sorts of ways. Um, Generates um, does a really nice little tin. If I didn't already have some, I would go for hers. Uh, a needle threader, just in case. Uh, tape measure, I hadn't got mine because I gave it to somebody while I was in Peru. Um, and these little tiny Kohana snips, which are the, just the most gorgeous thing ever. Uh, they came from a shop called Beyond Measure, which is in Yorkshire. Um, the lovely Grace who runs that has the most beautiful curated um, selection of sewing things. So if you're ever sure of a sewing gift for somebody, that's where I would suggest that you go to. I think I also took embroidery scissors as well. Uh, tape measure, I hadn't got um, just in case I needed to trim down a seam or something. Um, and that was me. That was everything that I took. I took some of the pattern pieces with me um, just for reference. And I think I just took the bodice ones and the collar ones and I think I left everything else behind. I did make sure that I had marked with tailor's tacks all my notches um, just because I knew that this was going to go in the hold so I knew that the temperature might fluctuate quite a lot so um, I made sure that they were marked. So there was a few things that I thought about really which one was the garment choice so in my case I didn't really have a lot of choice but I did choose something that I had made before, I'd twirled before and I knew it was going to fit so I didn't have to do kind of on the fly adjustments. Um, I think probably doing something more simple than this would probably have been advisable. Last year I sewed um, the cocoon top from one of the Nanny Hero books and dig that out to show you but I can't find it. I don't know where I've put it. I put it somewhere to put some embroidery on it um, and I've managed to lose it completely. I need to try and dig that out before my next holiday. But anyway, I made a cocoon top in like kind of a organic cotton voile um, in like an ivory colour thinking that that would be a really useful top to have and then I didn't really like it when it was made possibly just because it was so plain um, and because I think it's quite kind of you know when it's got that cocoon shape to it it maybe just isn't as fitted so I, so I kind of knew what I didn't want to make. 
you also need to be thinking about the fact that you've got a limited access to pressing normally. So this cotton, Indian cotton, um, finger pressed really well, actually, so I didn't have any problems with it. But I think if you were having kind of a more fussy fabric, then that perhaps wouldn't be ideal. Um, or you want something that's got a limited number of seams to be pressed or corners to be pressed. So I chose a fabric that behaves itself, is what I've written down. Um, and I think that, I think you want something that's going to do as it's told. Um, because, you know, we're on holiday, it's supposed to be a fun thing, which brings me on to uh, number five, which is, I think you should say something you really want to make. So if you're going to spend the time doing this by hand, um, then I think it should be something that you're kind of excited by making by hand. It shouldn't be a punishment. You know, if, if we're doing these things, normally it's because we've got a bit of extra time to spend. So it should be spent, you know, with something that's making you smile. And every time I pick this fabric out of the bag, it made me smile. I just thought it was such a joyful fabric. And number six is consider how you're getting there. So I had all the plans in the world. I was going to stitch this on the flight until I found out that with KLM, who is who my transatlantic flight was with, you're not allowed to take anything sharp. So it specifically says no needles, including sewing needles and knitting needles on their manifest. Now, whether they would enforce that, I don't know, but um, I didn't kind of want to chance it really. We were um, taking enough extra things, you know, like a panini press and a water um, heater and some of the things we'd kind of taken a lot of extra luggage and I thought I wouldn't, didn't really feel fair to um, to be a bit of a nuisance passenger on top of that. So I didn't have my stuff to sew on board, which was a bit sad, but I did have my notebook so I could do some play. Anyway, I'm very pleased with it. Um, I'm pleased that the hand sewing thing came to fruition um, and what I did when I got back to enable me to finish it is I sat down and caught up with um, the vlogs and the telly and things or the ones that I kind of thought I couldn't miss. Um, so that every, I was kind of caught up with everything and I'd finished my dress at the same time. So I was really pleased to finish it. Um, and I think by the time I got back on my sewing machine, it was about three weeks that I hadn't sewn with the sewing machine for. Um, which is, I don't know, it was kind of an interesting thing. I think that's perhaps the longest in my in my life since I started really sewing that I haven't sewn for. I really kind of, I normally sew at least two or three days a week or so. Anyway, that's me. So if you think of any more questions about hand sewing or, you know, I mean, obviously I'm not really experienced with this. There is um, Meg McElwee who, who runs So Liberated. She wrote a bit of a blog about, a blog about hand sewing and I know that there's a few other makers about Teresa from Lost My Thread we're talking about it anyway so it's obviously like a common theme that a few of us are doing this at the moment but um yeah I would hi highly recommend it I really enjoyed it um and so let me know in the comments have you made something by hand are you planning to so I'll say bye bye for now I hope wherever you are in the world you are time finding time to rest and replenish and do some making if that's something that brings you joy bye bye for now god bless